Bokitov Khabrin, I'm Stephen Bernoulli. You're watching Israeli News Live this morning. Breaking news all across the world. Uh, everything from North Korea, the Middle East, uh, Syria, I Iraq, and even that of Qatar, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. All kinds of things are happening globally right now, uh, especially in that part of the world. Even we'll be taking a prophetic look at Daniel 11, chapter 11, that is, verse 40. Theology turned completely upside down, and you'll find out that what we have seen in the translations of translation of Daniel 11:40 has been based on theology rather than what the verse actually says. How does that affect the Middle East? You're about to find that out in this broadcast here. But before we get to that, dealing with Syria, Iran, Iraq, all those regions there, let's go right into North Korea, what's happening, what's breaking there. Uh, we have the DPRK have told top leaders, uh, or the top leader of the DPRK, Kim Jong-un, has announced that the Air Force is to be ready to strike aircraft carriers in the region. That's something that's not going to sit over very well with President Trump, no doubt, nor the military commanders that are already in the region there uh, preparing to deal with the situation in North Korea. And also, uh, North Korea has vowed that they will not give up their nuclear program. Reuters coming out with an article, North Korea says it rejects new sanctions to continue uh, and, uh, sanctions and will continue their nuclear program. So very defiant Kim Jong-un and no doubt uh, seemingly to have the backing of both Russia and China. There have been articles that have come out whether or not China is really doing enough to try to uh, get Kim Jong-un to stop his nuclear program. And in the face of uh, Ms. Haley, the uh, ambassador of the United Nations for the United States there, with her pretty much laying the, 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 the word out to nations that deal with North Korea will also be sanctioned as well. Russia in defiance comes out and sets up new economic relationship with North Korea and even starts a ferry back and forth from Russia to North Korea. So it seems very obvious that North Korea is not much worried about the U.S. off of its coast, feeling that perhaps maybe Russia and China, according to the 1961 uh, uh, friend, uh, Friendship of Treaty Agreement that China has signed with North Korea, that both these countries may have their back and therefore very much defiant in their response. Uh, moving on into other news, uh, very concerning videos that have come out. There's two different videos that have come out. This is in Mosul. It is ISIS, no doubt. The U.S. is striking in the video that you can see. You'll find this out in a moment when they show the image of an ISIS flag on top of the building. But the major concern is the fact that this is in a residential area. Now, we know ISIS is held up in uh, all types of residential areas, but the problem is they're normally embedded with civilians. And as you can see clearly on the screen here, it is, they're using phosphorus weapons, a weapon that is banned other than the fact that the U.S. will use them for smoke screens. Uh, they are something that the U.S. military still continues to do. But as the uh, uh, people that were filming this came down on the ground, uh, they got closer uh, to the vicinity there. Buildings are just completely ablaze and burning, and I'm sure that anyone uh, that was in this area did not fare, fare very well. So, uh, granted, U.S. is targeting, uh, the U.S. coalition is targeting the ISIS in the area just as Russia is as well, but in this case here, definitely using phosphorus materials. Uh, one other video that we've seen on this that we shared on our Twitter account, and by the way, if you've not Subscribe to our Twitter account. Definitely check it out, Israeli News Live on Twitter, uh, and you're able to see the things that we're tweeting. We do retweet uh, things that we feel that are important, but we, we do not endorse those uh, particular ones that we are, are, are retweeting. Might also add as well that in the Philippines, the uh, this is a Catholic church that was targeted there, and uh, the ISIS members there that are targeting uh, Catholic churches in the region, I'm sure any Christians whatsoever are being targeted. Uh, they also, uh, of course, vandalize and they end up burning the church as well. Christians just not safe. Tearing up a picture of Pope, uh, former Pope uh, Benedict as well as that of Pope Francis. Uh, so a very unsafe situation for those uh, that are Christians in this region of the world, in the Philippines right now. And no doubt uh, President Durant will be dealing with that situation 
uh, too. Um, and again, let's jump now over to RT. Air, uh, key Arab League states cut ties with uh, Qatar over supporting terrorism uh, is in the latest things that are coming out. Saudi Arabia cut ties, Egypt cut ties, and then followed yet just a few moments ago by Libya and Yemen, all of these nations cutting ties with uh, and even Pakistan cutting ties with Qatar over the uh, allegations of supporting of terrorists. I find this kind of rather kind of interesting in the fact that uh, 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 this article here on Global Research, we reported this on Israeli News Live back when this happened, when, the U when Russia targeted uh, a secret operations room inside of Syria, destro destroying uh, 30 intelligence officers that were there. It was Israeli, American, British, Turkish, Saudi, and Qatari intelligence officers were killed in that. This was September 22nd, 2016, uh, that uh, Global Research reported on this. We covered this as well on Israeli News Live. Uh, and finding this very fascinating that these groups, especially Turkey and Saudi Arabia, they have always been working with uh, Qatar on backing terrorist organizations, uh, those that are fighting specifically against the Syrian government, President Bashar al-Assad trying to overthrow this nation here. But I guess what seems to be the problem is they're uh, siding with Iran in this particular case right now. So therefore, they are being cut by all the different governments. Uh, of course, Yemen stating that they've cut ties is kind of odd because we know there is a civil war inside of Yemen right now. And I'm sure the fighters that are pro-Iranian are not for the cutting of the ties, but the official government is for the cutting of ties. Uh, so it's kind of like calling the pot, calling the kettle black, if you, if you ask me. Very interesting situation. Uh, now, moving on in other news as well, something, or not news, but the prophetic side of our broadcast, and this is something that I brought out on Danoon Institute, much deeper, I might add, if you go to our, our YouTube channel called Danoon Institute. You definitely want to check that out. We'll have a link for that inside this video here. But uh, I wanted to share with you completely uh, turning the theological translation or the theological interpretation of Daniel's prophecy completely on its head. Uh, and that's Daniel 11, chapter 40. That has everything to do with the Middle East. And this is why I'm wanting to bring this out. Uh, and it has been completely misinterpreted over the years. And it's all because uh, it was translated into the English language based on uh, a theological belief. And that is that the king of the south and the king of the north are at each other's throats, so to speak. And so it really troubled me. It's troubled me for a while, this particular verse here. And the reason being is because uh, when you get down, and I'll just read the entire verse, and then I'll, I'll break it down for you why it bothers me. It says, and at the time of the end, this is the English version on uh, Mamre, the Mamre translation. KJV is a little bit different, but very similar. At the time of the end shall the king of the south push in him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships, and shall enter into the countries and shall overflow as he passes through. Now, what doesn't seem to make sense here is if the king of the south and the king of the north are pushing at one another or are, are pushing against him as an enemy, why then, if the king of the south is Israel, or even if it was Saudi Arabia or any other singular country, why do we have the word countries in the plural, even in the English language here, if it's two powers struggling against one another? Now, some might argue, well, that's uh, the king of the north and king of the south is Judea and Samaria of the biblical times. And, but even then, it still should be the word country uh, countries should be singular, country. Uh, but I would agree there is some truth to that. You'd have to check out the Noon Institute to really understand the fullness of that because we find out in Isaiah chapter 9 that Ephraim and Manasseh are fighting, uh, fighting against one another, and they both are over Judah. Again, it uses the word al in there to show that it is against, but it's actually over with authority. And we find out that, that, uh, that in the case of Ephraim and Manasseh in Isaiah 9, which is re in reality the king of the north, that is Roman Catholicism, the Catholic Church 
the head of the Catholic Church and the British Empire and the United States, of course, being by extension under the British Empire. Now, all of Europe is under the Roman Catholicism. It is a, a, a European Union, pretty much founded by Rome or the support of Rome to begin with. And this is where you have your Ephraim and Manasseh, as we would see in the, uh, as, as Jacob, when he blessed Ephraim and Manasseh in ancient times, he crosses his arms, forming the cross, and also prophesied that they would be like a fish on land. Uh, and of course, it is symbolic for Christianity to have the fish symbol. The Vatican itself using the fish hat uh, as part of their ritual and Christianity, always believing that uh, Yeshua uh, you know, as he, his first apostles were fishermen, and he said for them to be fisher, fishers of men and not the fish of the sea itself. So that's where we see the symbology right there. But here's where it gets interesting in Daniel 11, uh, chapter 11, verse 40, and this is what kind of brings in the problems. We see that it says here the word countries down here at the bottom, and it's right here, uba u. Ba Baal and they come into the countries, all right, and shall overflow them. But we have it as if the king of the north is against the king of the south, or the king of the south is pushing at him, uh, is pushing at the king of the north. And that's where we find this in English right here. Well, here's your king of the south right here, Melech HaNegiv, of course, the Negev, the desert, Negev, southern Israel. That's why some believe it's Judea and Samaria, southern and northern Israel is what it represents. So we know that the king of the south is an Israeli leader, all right? But when it says that he shall push at him, the king of the south pushes at him, and it's kind of reversed order. The ad him in Hebrew is at the top and the other way around. But we find right here, Itanagach imo. It doesn't say that he will push at him. It says he will push with him. And that's what changes the entire meaning. So the king of the south is pushing with him because emo, you can't say emo means at him. Doesn't make sense. It means with him. But if he pushes with him and he's not against him, but over him, he comes like a storm. So... But now, Al could be translated as against him, but in general Hebrew, it would be upon or over him. And so I find it interesting, if we begin to read it the way the Hebrew actually states, we would have, at the time of the end shall the king of the south push with him, and the king of the north shall come over him like a storm. Literally, the word in Hebrew is like a storm or a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships and shall enter into the countries plural and shall overflow as he passes through all right now here's what's interesting how does that look in biblical prophecy in modern days well just think about it if he is pushing with him that's the king of the south trying to get the king of the north in agreement to come against his enemies inside the Middle East, Iraq, Syria, Iran, even Egypt. And notice we find out that these countries are pretty much all mentioned in prophecy of being of falling in the final days. But if he comes, if he pushes at him, in other words, he keeps pushing him to come down and do something about his enemies. Well, that's kind of interesting because ever since people like Barack Hussein Obama was president, it, you always saw Prime Minister Netanyahu pushing at Obama to get him to take out Iran, but he just didn't do it. Now the U.S. has a president that's willing to do it. And it's not just the U.S., but the U.S. gets the coalition with the European Union because the Pope of the Rome, he's the head there, and they work together to come into the Middle East and take out all these countries. That's why we see the British forces and the U.S. forces working in Jordan, getting ready to take out Syria, but at the same time, they're going to use that opportunity to take out Iran. But as it states here, he comes over him, not against him, over him, over the country of Israel with what? With his chariots and with his horsemen. Now, let me just show you some uh, footage here of that type of a situation actually taking place. This, uh, and let me just kind of give you a little bit of an illustration here. 
Um, uh, well, we don't have to do that. We already know when the U.S. sends in, they send in like a dozen of these C-130 planes here, but here is a clip here of the U.S. sending over uh, in a test run there, actually dropping Humvees out the back uh, uh, of the C-130 there. And it's just one after another, after another, after another. So what is he dropping? If you were to look at this in the times of biblical times, well, he's dropping chariots. So he comes over him like a storm with chariots and with horsemen. Those that are going to use these chariots in battle there in the Middle East. This was only a test run that the United States was doing there. And of course, we know there's one situation where there was a major failure of this happening. But for the most case, the U.S. military is very good about what they're doing. But then we also have the fact that the U.S. Uh, is, is going into... Uh, let me just drop that one there. And it talks about the ships as well. And this is exactly what we have in this video here. The many ships that came in as well. These are all the armored vehicles, etc. that are coming in and a, and a huge amphibious landing uh, that was being done. This was just happened to be a military drill where this is all going on. But as you can see, they're offloading all of these tracked vehicles uh, armored personnel that they send to the shore in these huge ships and how many of those will end up coming when a war is ready to be launched uh, that they're going to take down Iran uh, so if we begin to look at this from from a map situation you know we see Iran is right here you have the Gulf of Oman uh, the Persian Gulf uh, but in, in the case of Israel they're going to, where is going to be the first battle well, it says they're going to come over him. So obviously they'll be going over Israel as they work to take down Damascus. And inadvertently, they will also come in to take down Iran as well. And it's just fascinating to see that prophecy can have a totally different meaning altogether. And that's what I'm seeing myself, friends, that we have translated these verses for years, assuming that it is a battle between the king of the north and the king of the south, when actually it seems that they're working together. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. If this type of broadcast is a blessing to you, let me just please ask you to consider supporting the work that we do here. You can do so by visiting our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, the name of the website appears here at the end of the broadcast right on your screen there. Also, a link will be inside of the description. And as always, right above the subscribe button on Israeli News Live, be sure you check to make sure you're on Israeli News Live. There are several people that post our news broadcasts on their channels. Uh, so you have to look to make sure you're on the YouTube channel called Israeli News Live. And if you are right above the subscribe button, there is a donate button there. You can donate there or our, uh, our address as well appears on the screen in front of you. I'm Stephen Benoom. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. And have a good day.